sure I get angry. Uh, you're very, very ang angry and indignant. Uh, I don't like being locked up for something I didn't do, and I don't like my liberty taken away, and I don't like being treated like an animal, and I don't like, like people walking around and ogling me like I'm some sort of weirdo, because I'm not. On January 24, 1989, at 7 a.m., before the sun rose over the state prison in Stark, Florida, plans were underway in the death house for an execution many thought would never occur. The electrocution of Ted Bundy, America's most notorious serial killer. After nearly 10 years on death row, Bundy was scheduled to die for the 1978 murder of Kimberly Leach, a 12-year-old girl. Yet he admitted to killing more than 30 others in a grisly bloodbath that took him through Washington State, Oregon, Utah, Idaho, and Colorado. Since his original capture in 1976, Bundy had become a media sensation. I'll plead not guilty right now. And your America was mesmerized by the former Boy Scout, college graduate, and law student who as a rising young Republican was even a shining star in Washington state politics. The Ted Bundy we knew before there were any accusations, any charges, any arrests or anything, uh, was a very nice guy. He was a friend of ours. We didn't think he was strange or different. Once he was arrested, Bundy taunted the system. He escaped twice from Colorado prisons while awaiting murder trials there. After his arrest in Florida, he showboated, acting as his own counsel while wrapped groupies devoured his every move. He was like a movie star, and if he'd look around, they'd all giggle and nudge each other. And I thought, it never occurs to them that if he were free and he met them on a dark night, they're just the type of potential victim he would be looking for. But Bundy's natural cockiness was now gone as two guards led him to the death chamber. Bundy seemed very resigned to his fate. Bundy seemed startled when he saw the electric chair. Outside the jail, a crowd estimated at 500 avidly awaiting news of his demise chanted slogans like, Burn, Bundy, burn. They ran electricity At 7.16 a.m., an anonymous executioner pushed the button. 2,000 volts surged through Bundy's body. Within 60 seconds, one of the worst serial killers of all time was pronounced dead. When we came out after the, the execution, it's almost a carnival atmosphere on the part of some of these people. Cheering, uh, blowing of horns, uh, celebration. He'd had an easier death than any of his victims. Some 35 women may have fallen prey to him. Only he knew the real number, and he carried that with him to his grave. Police believe Bundy's killing spree had begun in 1974, when he was 28 years old, studying law and living adjacent to the University of Washington in Seattle. He made a very, very positive impression. Uh, he, was, uh, he was very verbal, articulate, intelligent. I guess if I were to characterize him, he looked like a young Cary Grant. But at that time, no one could guess that this clean-cut and good-looking young man was about to begin a series of rapes, tortures, murders, and dismemberments that would shock the world. After midnight on January 4th, 1974, Ted Bundy stood outside the basement bedroom window of Joni Lenz, an 18-year-old student at the University of Washington. He entered her bedroom through a door accessible from outside, and while she slept, he savagely bludgeoned her with a crowbar. The next morning, Joni was found surrounded by a pool of blood. A bed rod had been torn away from her headboard, and in a sexual frenzy, rammed into her vagina. There was a specific reason why Bundy singled out Joni. It was a physical characteristic she shared with almost all of his victims. She wore her hair long 
and parted in the middle. But it would take years before the police understood why that moved Bundy to murder. Linda Ann Healy was a senior at the University of Washington, majoring in psychology. On January 31st, 1974, after Linda had gone to bed, Bundy broke into her room. He knocked her unconscious, wrapped her in bed sheets, and quietly carried Linda out of the house. Her scattered body parts and decapitated skull wouldn't be found for a year. To those who would track him, and those who would later try to understand his crimes, the question remained, how could this charming and intelligent young man commit such unspeakable crimes against people he didn't even know? They are things. They are victims. They are not women. And I never heard him really use the term women or females or anything very often. He referred to them as things, as objects. The other person's life doesn't have value since he doesn't see her as a real person with real needs. And if anything, the idea that investigators and the community will be shocked and the parents will suffer just makes it all the more exciting because he's getting even. Yet somehow Bundy, like other serial killers, was able to keep the murderous rage hidden inside of him secret. To his friends, family, and colleagues, he seemed very well adjusted. Nice person. And he was a person that we socialized with and uh, we knew a little bit professionally. And I thought was really an up and comer. Somebody was going to do well in life. One of the very important aspects of the facade that he built was one of great sincerity. He literally oozed sincerity. Yet appearances can deceive, and Ted Bundy was a master of deception. Little did I realize, of course, at the time that that was a carefully crafted social veneer that he had laboriously developed and used in, in his interactions. I never saw any aspects of the monster that lurked behind that mask. But by 1974, the monster who lived behind the mask had been there for a long time, perhaps since Ted's earliest childhood. I have always felt that uh, beneath the veneer of a, a normal childhood was, was some great hostility toward someone, probably his mother. Police believe that in 1974, Ted Bundy embarked upon a series of grisly murders that began in Seattle, Washington, and over a period of five years, spread through Oregon, Utah, Idaho, Colorado, and Florida. His rampage took the lives of at least 35 young women. When he was arrested in 1976, one of those most steadfast in his defense was his mother, Louise Bundy. She would continue believing in her son until his execution in 1989. My Christian upbringing tells me that to take another's life under any circumstances is wrong. And I don't believe the state of Florida is above uh, the laws of God. Louise is a, a petite woman, a very nice woman. She was in denial until the night before Ted was executed when he told her the truth. Many experts believe the seeds of Bundy's rage were planted in his childhood. 